we just would start bowing at all the students and all of a sudden they just all break out into and go, come see me da, come see me da, come see me da, come see me da. And you would want to feel the life particles radiating into you really hard, like into your stomach. So you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're like, okay, just basically almost made myself vomit. I was beating on this old lady's body by like punching on this person. Then we're doing these weird poses and I'm farting in downward dog. And then I'm getting up and I'm dancing my head back and forth to Abba's dancing queen. Hey guys, and welcome back to Mangotology. If you're new here, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Stephen Mango, and I'm an ex-Scientologist that works here on YouTube to expose Scientology. If you want to stay up to date on all my videos, please make sure to go down below, hit that red subscribe button, and turn on your bell notifications, and you'll get an alert whenever I release a new video exposing Scientology. So for today's video, I want to tell you about the Korean yoga cult that I got sucked into once I left Scientology. Now you would think after leaving one cult that I learned my lesson and then I would just go on about my life and stay away from different highly controlling groups or religions or other practices that take control and take advantage of their members. However, when you leave Scientology, you don't necessarily always leave and process everything right away. It takes years and years. I've been out of Scientology now for about six years, I would say, and I still have instances where I have to sort my thoughts and try to make sense of what I went through in Scientology. And I was in a very vulnerable, broken place when I left the church and I didn't really know what to do with myself. You guys have heard my story. If you've been watching and following my channel for a long time, then you know that I really wanted to be an auditor when I was in Scientology and I really had my life surrounded by Scientology. And I was looking for some sort of practice when I left Scientology that would help me with my anxiety, my racing thoughts, and my purpose. And I just wanted to feel more centered and more grounded. I didn't know how to do that necessarily. And I was just Googling different places where I could possibly meditate or do yoga. And it's not something I've ever done before was yoga. And I've kind of sort of meditated, but I never really had a set process of knowing if I was really meditating correctly. And I guess there's really not a right or wrong way to meditate, but I did go to a couple different like Buddhist meditation centers and stuff. And I just don't know even now if I feel like a Buddhist practice is right for me or not. I think it is great. I think it's awesome to be able to have a Buddhist mindset, but I think I just like materialistic things too much. Honestly, just like saying that out loud and putting it out there. I don't know if I can live as pure as a Buddhist would live. But anyways, I did some different Buddhist meditations and stuff and they were okay, but I just never really felt like anything really zenned me out the way that I was looking for, or maybe that I had the idea in my head that I could kind of achieve through some type of practice. But anyways, I was looking up um, a yoga meditation practice. So what do I do? I go on Google and I'm just typing in yoga meditation, insert my city here, but just say Los Angeles, just to make it simple. And I don't live in the valley, but a place came up in Burbank, which is about 15, 20 minutes or so from where I live. And it was called Don Yoga. And initially it was called, I believe, Don Hawk or Don Hawk Yoga. And actually, no, this is what it was. It was Don Hawk. And then after they experienced controversy, they changed it to Don Yoga because yoga obviously is very widely accepted as a practice, right? No one's going to be like, oh, yoga, that's a cult. If you're saying, oh, I go to this yoga center in Burbank, no one's going to look at you funny and be like, oh, are you sure you're not in a cult? Or are you sure you're not doing something a little suspicious or like odd here? So I just figured that this is probably just a form of yoga. I never heard of Don, had no idea what it was, but I knew that its founder was named Ilchi Lee. And it's Korean based, and I, again, didn't really know much. So I started watching a couple of these different YouTube videos, because I did look it up a little bit, but not enough to really go into a deep thing. I know every single person who watches this is probably looking at me like, and I know, like, 
I have to do like very heavy research before signing up for anything. I always am a very trusting person. I go with my gut. I go by the people I meet. I go by the practice and the philosophy. And I was thinking this the other day when I was coming back from my other spiritual practice that I started doing. And I just think that with any sort of religion, faith, group, nothing's perfect. Scientology is different. Scientology actually goes to extreme lengths to harm people, to ruin their lives, to actually commit really serious crimes against their members and former members, and they're actually a detriment to society. On the flip side, there's some different religious groups and spiritual practices that may have a bad rap, there may be some bad members, there may be some different irregularities. Nothing's 100% perfect, but it's the practice itself that you want to look at and see if that's something that you can implement in your life without it actually taking control of you or your thoughts or trying to make all your money, all your time, and all the different characteristics of what a cult is. So I started looking and watching some of these YouTube videos and they were kind of like patting their head and like patting their stomach and then they were doing like these like bouncing sort of motions. And then you would see other people doing these different yoga poses. So again, I'm like, maybe this is a little weird, but let me check it out and see more about what this Don Yoga actually is. So I arrive in Burbank at this Don Yoga Center and it was in a strip mall. There's probably a grocery store and just like your average like in insurance agent person, right? So there's just different things in the strip mall and it didn't give me any sort of red flags. But when I did call up, it wasn't the very first class. I called up and they do like this free energy evaluation, I think they called it, or an energy session, right? So I'm thinking, okay, it's free. And again, guys, this is like right after I came out of Scientology, maybe within a couple of months, looking again for my spirituality. So I arrived there, meet with this nice seemingly so Korean woman and she takes me in and in the center it was all like this rubber padding on the ground which was weird it was not like how like a kid's bounce house would be but it was just like it, you have a little extra bounce to your step and it was almost like that sort of um like memory foam type of padding on the ground which was kind of odd but you had to remove your shoes you go in and i was sitting on this like yoga mat thing and she started kind of like moving her hands like over my body and stuff like that and i'm thinking okay maybe this is some type of chakra sort of work and i don't really know what is kind of going on but i'm just trying to be open and i always do that i don't like to come in critical i don't want people to think i'm judging them or their practice i just want to be open, be in my own space, and let someone else inform me about their work. And if I want to sign up, great. If I don't, then I don't. But I don't want anyone to be off put by me asking too many questions or whatever. I'm just like, let me do her thing and kind of see what's going on. So she starts like scanning like my head and she's scanning kind of like my abdomen. And I think this is probably the line they tell everyone because I don't consider myself hot headed. But in terms of what she was kind of describing, she says, when your head is more hot, then that's bad. And versus your stomach and intestines, I'm sure she worded it in a much more, in her mind, spiritual or energetic way, but just from my perception of what she was saying, and the abdomen is cool, right? So it needs to actually be the opposite. Your head has to be cool and your abdomen area has to be hot and you have to be able to send and receive messages through your spine, which makes sense. So again, there could be blockages like in your spine, but also given that I was considered hot-headed energetically and my stomach was cool, we had to do this sort of work eventually through this process of Don Yoga to reverse it. So then I'm gonna have much more clear thoughts, I'm gonna be more temperament and more calm and more patient, and everything's gonna be great when energetically it can shift to this being cool. And then, of course, if you have problems and with your bodily functions, I guess, or your stomach, or sending and receiving messages, because I think she was kind of making it seem like it comes from your stomach and then goes up your spine, which I don't really know how that would make sense, but again, I'm just calling along and playing along with this right now, but she was saying that if this is warm and everything is moving, energetically and nothing's going to get blocked so say this is your spine and the energy is moving up and you have like a blockage right here kind of like a subluxation like a chiropractor might describe in terms of like a physical sort of thing which i know people don't believe in subluxation but it's another thing and then energetically it just kind of stops here right you need your spine to be able to send and receive these type of messages and that's why i'm experiencing all these different emotional and mental and spiritual blockages and things in my life
of course there's a way to fix that and she was telling me that they have all through the day they have different of these like dawn training classes and through their yoga ritualistic practice then you're going to be able to start gaining a lot more clarity in your life you're going to start feeling better you're going to shift all the energy and make your head cold and all these different things that they want you to be able to achieve to live a better life according to john yoga and i'm thinking like oh okay like it kind of makes sense in a way and i do believe in energy and i do think that there's maybe something to this so she was saying to me like, you're looking for a spiritual practice and that's what kind of sold me hook line and sinker right then i'm like yes like tell me more like i'd love to know but then there's basically these different training levels in don yoga besides just like the regular studio work of doing what they do in the studio there is like the spiritual level almost like scientology in the sense where you start off and you're doing like the first level which is kind of I believe it was like a weekend course and then there's like another second part of the course and then a third level so they had these different spiritual levels that were available if you so choose eventually if you wanted to follow the spiritual path of don yoga so it was a lot to kind of take in all at once but i said you know what let me give it a try so she said that she needed to sell me a membership of course like hello <laughs> um everything ends up turning into some sort of cash grab in the end so she sold me i believe it was a month of classes you can take unlimited classes at the studio but that's how it works you don't just pop in for like one class i mean i think she actually said you can show up for like a week or two i believe it was for a certain price but it ended up being a better deal if you just signed up for the whole entire month like say for example a week you can sign up for 400 but you can do a whole month for 575 so it's like let's do the whole month for the 575 and again that's probably what almost eight to ten thousand dollars a year when it all comes down seventy two hundred dollars maybe so it's not necessarily a cheap program and that's just like the base level price for don yoga so i sign up pay the 575 dollars and i show up the following day to start this energy training work at the don john yoga center so i show up and it wasn't your typical yoga class so i never really took yoga anyway so i didn't really know what i would be expecting anyways but i went in and there was probably i would say about 15 people so it wasn't small it wasn't a large class or anything like that but still there were people all of us paying 600 dollars a month 15 people i mean there is a money aspect to this so i get onto the yoga mat thing and in the beginning we had to start by doing don john taps warm-ups begin 10 to 15 minutes before class through simple tapping energy gathers in your lower abdomen warming up your body and helping you to focus now it's not as gentle sounding as you would think oh don john top sounds like a massage or something and you eventually got a partner to do this with too so what you do is you get fist and you have to tap on your don john area which is your stomach again remember you have to warm up the stomach so you're going like this and i don't really want to do it hard on myself but you have to like do it almost like you're gonna like make yourself throw up like really hard like into your stomach so you're going one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six and you have to do like hundreds of these don john taps but i mean you have to like really hit your stomach and you're going back and forth back and forth like trying to warm up your don john and it was really weird so i'm going one two three four five six and i just felt like an idiot and they're like hitting themselves at like the hardest sort of force and i don't know spiritually energetically or physically if that actually is going to do anything besides give you a stomach ache but anyways i played along with it so then you got a partner so i got partnered up with this old lady she was like 80 something years old and we needed to do the same sort of thing but like these taps like up and down like on her body as well so i have to like hit on her back and you know to just start like punching and hitting on this person i'm thinking like this person can file a lawsuit on me <laughs> if i like hit them too hard or anything so i started doing it and i wasn't doing it as hard as i probably could have done on her because again i was kind of like how hard do i do it because she was doing it on me and again it wasn't even like super forceful against like an 85 year old woman like hitting on my back it's like okay like it's fine but you know she probably could have gone a lot harder or other people if they were not 85 years old probably could have hit me a lot harder but i was doing it on her like doing according to how they were showing me to do it she's like no like hit me like hard so i'm like 
like hitting on this old lady. She's like flying forward or flying back or whatever, depending on which side of her I was on. And I'm like, what in the hell is this sort of class? Like, this is like so weird. So then we do this thing and we would like get like our hands like kind of in a prayer thing. And we just would start bowing at all the students. And all of a sudden they just all break out into and go, come see me da, come see me da, come see me da, come see me da. And you just go up to all the different students and like, honestly, only maybe like one of them was like Korean or anything like that. Like they're all just like white people in Burbank. <laughs> it's doing this weird Korean yoga thing. So I was like, come see me da, come see me da. And they start chanting some other different things, which was weird. Then on one of the days we had to do like these different yoga poses. So I was in some sort of pose. I don't want to demonstrate it. I have back problems, but it was like my leg was kind of up and I was kind of like downward dog and like lifting my leg sort of thing. And I just remember I was like so quiet and I'm not flexible. I'm not used to doing anything like this. So I just like fart like as loud as like anything like in this class, in this yoga pose. So people must be like, who the hell is this new recruit into our center? Like not you know, able to control his bowels, but I guess I warmed them up through all those Don John taps. So I did a weird yoga thing that was really embarrassing. And then I'm telling you guys, this is basically how every class went for like a week besides the farting every class. But that's basically how it went every week. So I'm not gonna tell you about every single class, but it's basically the same exact thing every single day. And it gets even weirder, so bear with me. So she's again like uh, Fatima, the teachers are coming around like scanning the body and like trying to see like the energy in different areas and stuff. And like, yes, yes, like you're making improvements and it's so good. And you know, you'd feel your, yourself lying on the mat at the end and you would just like feel her just like kind of like putting her hands like over your body and stuff. And I don't know what messages she was looking for, but sometimes again too, you, might be, for example, having a headache that day, and then she'd be like, oh, you know, like there's a blockage here. And they're like, yeah, like maybe there is something to this Don Yoga. So then at the end, another weird thing you had to do was, oh, you had to do like the bouncing. Oh, well, I guess this is part of the bouncing too. But you know, Ilchi Lee believes in brainwave vibration. Brainwave vibration, a dynamic meditation that activates the natural healing powers of your brain. So somehow by doing these type of things with your head, like bouncing your head and rolling it back and forth, and there's a specific way to do it, but you have to just kind of rock your head back and forth and it triggers your brain waves. So then again, your brain waves are able to transmit messages or communicate or your brain waves are able to get like re-stimulated again. I don't know what his theory is, but it was just like you're bouncing your head. So you had to like kind of like go like this and you're bouncing around in the room. So then she puts on music and she puts on Abba's Dancing Queen. So everyone has to close their eyes. We're on this you know, cushiony foam mat thing for the whole entire room. There's this big poster, which I'm going to describe this big blue and other colored poster with life particles on it. So we're facing the life particle poster. <laughs> I sound so dumb. I don't even want to put this on the internet, but I am because you guys have to know just like there's a lot of weird things out there. So we close our eyes and then Dancing Queen starts playing and we all just have to start just like moving our body and doing like the brainwave vibration thing. And then you're supposed to just get like really into it and like you kind of like dance a little bit but you're just kind of going like this and you're like moving your head and you're flailing your arms back and forth and dancing queen comes on and again the idea is that the music is louder and louder and louder and it's like dancing queen is blasting so loud you could hear it from burbank all the way to like lax airport it was so loud i don't know how the neighbors are able to put up a don yoga but they played it so loud and you're supposed to get like really euphoric and people are like getting like so so into it and again you're dancing right so there comes a point where besides just the ABBA weird brainwave vibration thing. You're listening to ABBA. I believe she might have played some other music through. I don't really remember a lot of my Don, Yon exper Don Yoga experience just because it was a very short time, only like a week or two that I was in there. But I, I do remember dancing a lot and the idea was just to make you, getting your body moving. Of course you're going to feel good if you're dancing and moving your body and stretching and exercising. And I think that's just a normal human response to this type of thing. Anyways, it's not like it was a spiritual thing, at least for me. It was just a weird sort of practice that I was engaging in. So at the end, everyone's like tired and exhausted. It's like, okay, end of class. So like, okay, just basically almost made myself vomit. I was beating on this old lady's body by like punching on this person. Then we're doing these weird poses and I'm farting and do downward dog. And then I'm getting up and I'm dancing my head back and forth to 
ABBA's Dancing Queen. I could have done that on YouTube in my bedroom for $600, what do we get? So then we sit there and then there's like a little circle. So this is again another like kind of culty weird thing. So you sit in the circle and people have actually reported like they're, they might actually be putting something in the tea. People say like they felt high after drinking the tea or they don't really know what was in the tea and no one who was even serving the tea even knew what was in that tea, but for some reason it was making people feel really happy. But I read about that later, but I was drinking the tea, I'm like, oh, this is pretty good tea. It's probably like Kool-Aid, like laced with something, like some sort of hypnotic drug or something and keep you going back there. But who knows what they put in that tea at Don Yoga. If anyone knows, comment below. Let me know what kind of tea that they use at Don Yoga. Cause it's like a tea circle, right? So you sit there and you have to drink the tea. So first you sit there and Fatima pours you the tea and you sit there and you're holding the cup of tea and then you sip it and you're supposed to just like feel the energy and as the tea kind of goes down the back of your throat and into your soul and through this chakra and blah 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 so you're just drinking you know cup of tea so we're sitting there meditating sipping on this tea and we have to go around the room and share our wins and successes I'm like I'm basically in Scientology again but in another form of it so I'm sitting there and I'm like well you know I'm new and um, cause I remember I was one of the first person, like, I didn't know like how deep it was going to be. Like I'm new and I'm just really excited to be like more aware of my body and knowing about the energy. And I felt, you know, the life particles flowing through me and just like made something up. Like, wow. Whoa, boy. Like that's so exciting. I'm just kind of like, really? Like didn't really say anything all that magical, but people are going through and sharing about how Ilchi Lee and Don Yoga has changed their life. And it was just like being bathed in love, surrounded in love. Um, I tingled from, from head to toe. I cried. The tears just came. They just came and came. I really felt the energy. I felt connected to everyone. Um, it's really incredible. Incredi I've never experienced anything like that, so it was really neat for me. Are you going to be coming to the happiness retreat in Arizona? Oh yes, you know, for $4,000 to the different people and students. Are you going to be taking this class? And I'm realizing in my awareness training, and again, it's just like all these type of buzzwords and stuff that you see in a lot of these like highly controlling groups and stuff. So everyone went around the room, shared their success of how Downward Dog and you know, shaking their head and dancing to Abba's Dancing Queen has changed their life. And after all of that, we had to sit there and meditate to the life particles. Now there's this poster in Don Yoga, and from my understanding, again, it's been a long time, but there's life particles on this poster. So it's like this weird kind of abstract design. And by meditating on the life particles or the little card, you can get a card or you can get like a poster, but it's like a poster in the facility. So then you sit there and you're like looking or I don't remember if you had your eyes closed or not. I'm not sure either way if it made a difference, but like you would sit there and you would want to feel the life particles radiating into you. As it came toward me, it just broke up into particles. Particles just shower down. And you just want all these life particles to be able to maybe give you more power, awareness in your life. The concept is simple. You visualize bright particles of love, hope, and courage going into someone. However, the more specific and realistic your imagination is, the more powerful your mind becomes. So Ilchi Lee created the Life Particle card. It displays the image of the Life Particle Sun, an endless universal source of life particles, the essence of life itself. The Life Particle Sun may even look familiar to you. For ages, in spiritual practices around the world, people have obtained guidance, hope, and power from such images. You can use the card to visualize life particles in your mind, but it is also an invaluable tool to physically hold in your hand and use as a life particle emitter. So we did our meditation over the life particles. And after all that was done, after just staring at a $7.99 Costco poster, I went out and I remember she was again trying to sell me the different courses. You know, if you take this happiness class like on level one, it's gonna give you the information on how you can become happy in your life. That's $850, for example. Then this workshop, come to Sedona, in Sedona, Arizona, and there's always retreats in Sedona, Arizona. And you're able to do these different sort of training programs and things. I'm like, okay, like that all sounds great, but I just wanna like kind of experience this a little bit more before I like jump all in and I start signing up. Cause I was basically signing up for the bridge. Once you take like the happiness course, that's almost like a, introduction to like their full levels of spiritual training and i just kind of wanted to see what i thought about it first i'm like maybe i can get kind of get used to it and i'm like no i'm like trying to again shift my thoughts and my beliefs to do something that i don't really believe in so once i started realizing that was the case i started 
backing off of the idea of Don Yoga and I got my money back. I went to the center manager because it was within the two weeks and I said, hey, you know what? This isn't really working out for me. Can I get my $700, $600 back, however much I spent at that point? And luckily she said yes and they refunded my credit card and they're like, you can always come back if you're interested. So it wasn't like a Scientology refund thing. They weren't mad. They didn't you know, make a hate blog about me or anything like that. But I talked about this on my channel before, not on Mangotology, on another channel and took the video down, but I thought it was kind of a fun thing to kind of share today. And as you look up Ilchi Lee, Rolling Stones and like different um, websites actually talked about Ilchi Lee. I think someone died in one of these sort of, um, he made people like carry rocks on like a backpack, like through the mountain desert at a hundred degree temperatures and they died or there was some sort of thing, kind of like how there's been like sweat lodge deaths. If there's any other additional information I find, I'll place clips and stuff in here for you guys. This thing is very interesting that all these different cults are all kind of similar. They all have this one charismatic crazy leader who tries to do and push the boundaries and they have all the answers and they all come under investigation. They all get exposed one way or another and I know that there was different weird rituals, bowing rituals. It'll actually leave me people bow to like a statue like 5,000 times for example and they had to do it in like the hot desert sun or they'd like smash people's head underwater and I don't know how these different leaders think that this is spiritually enlightening to people it's just, it's just a controlling mechanism to have people worship them as these big leaders and to me after Scientology which was so intricate of a brainwashing procedure something like Il Chile was able to see kind of very quickly that this wasn't what it was supposed to be so luckily I already knew and could spot it right away and I can't get sucked into groups that are surface level Scientology is very detailed like as I've seen other groups compared to Scientology nothing is as detailed as Scientology nothing is as mind-numbing mind-controlling trying to take control of every area of your life I think Don Yoga I don't know if there's any been like new escapees or any YouTube videos. I'm kind of curious now telling my story again if there really is any like ex-Don yoga people. And I know that there are and a lot of people that I reached out to a couple years ago and I wanted to do a video about them were completely silent. No one wanted to speak out about Don yoga, which I thought was very interesting. So if anyone has ever been in Don yoga and wants to speak out, um, come on my channel. Maybe I should do a documentary or go inside Don yoga again or something. I think it might be fun, but I just wanted to share with you guys that there's nothing that can really replace like good mental health therapy or just like regular basic meditation that you can do on YouTube. You don't have to give someone all your money, all your time. You don't have to be doing weird taps. I mean, maybe that is someone's spiritual enlightening activity. You do you if that's really what you want to do. But I just feel that no one has an eternal answer. And that's what I found out through all this practice. And this is the message I'm trying to like convey to you guys if you're looking for something in your life like I have I kind of found something now that I really like but uh, spiritually but for you and what will work for you is you know kind of picking and choosing doing a little bit of research and trying to come up with your own prayer and meditations and things that kind of give you happiness and no one has an eternal answer and if someone's charging you hundreds or thousands of dollars to get some sort of mystical answer to the world there's no such thing maybe someone has some sort of philosophical or enlightening ideas but i don't think anyone has the be all end all of our spiritual nature or anything that's going to like change our life so incredibly and if there was they'd give it out for free because they would want everyone to experience experience that. So I just want to share with you that story, guys. I have now learned my lesson. I'm now in therapy and I'm not easily prey and vulnerable to different groups and other sort of high tactic, very cult sort of things. So I just want to share that story with you. It's a little bit of outside of Scientology, but as you guys can see, it's kind of parallel to Scientology in a lot of ways. There is not as much control in terms of like the requirements, but there were financial pressure. There was a very weird aspect to it. So I'm curious what you guys think about this whole Don Yoga thing down in the comment section down below. I will see you guys. I'm going away for a few days this weekend. So I'll be back, I think, Monday to do some more videos for you guys. So stay tuned for that. Um, have a great weekend, guys. I will see you when I'm back from my little vacation and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.